The day of reckoning has finally arrived. This has been driving me crazy for a long time now. And I'm sorting it out today. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and this is my mud room. It's, it is just a disaster. I really need to get this sorted. It's got to the stage where my daughter can't even like put her stuff anywhere. So she just drops it on the floor. And honestly, I can't blame her. So I need to get this sorted. Also right beside it is a coat closet. Oh, let me squeeze in. Also in need of attention. It's got coats, obviously, but also random stuff. Not 100% sure what's up here. It's got cleaning supplies, stuff to be donated, shopping bags, all of that sort of stuff. So we're decluttering, organizing, tidying. Today, I have already taken the first step and I would always recommend this if you are about to start on a decluttering project and that is to take before photos. It really does make a big difference when you look at the before and after. So top tip for you before you start into a project, take your before photos. This is a really narrow space. This is basically just a hallway. So I've got lights set up so that you can see, but it's gonna be really awkward to get camera angles and stuff. So I hope I can show you. Also, the puppy is napping. So I'm hoping that I can get through this. I'm hoping it won't take me too long. But listen, since I had a child, never after I got through the toddler phase did I think I would have to be fitting in projects during nap times. I know it's a little bit annoying, I know it does make the job take longer, but I always recommend completely emptying out a space because that is what is going to get you the biggest results. That is what is going to lead to the best outcome. How does one tiny space even hold so much stuff? Let me show you everything that I pulled out of there and it is not a pretty sight. I have no words for this disaster. It, I mean, it's just random stuff. It is coats and shoes and hats, but then there's like obviously cleaning stuff, papers, bags of papers. There's like Halloween stuff, not from the Halloween just gone either. Um, school papers. I mean, this you can't really tell here, but that is a massive pile of coats and jackets. Lots of. Um, school bags, backpacks, and yeah, just random stuff. I can't even get out of here now. <laughs> oh, now I have to go through all of this stuff. This is the worst part. The worst. Also, this is filthy and will need to be cleared off before I put anything back. At this point, you really want to have, you know, bins, boxes, baskets, tubs, whatever, ready to go so that you can really quickly separate and contain any rubbish, recycling, donations, and stuff that just belongs elsewhere in your home because otherwise you're just creating more piles of stuff. This is part of what I like to call the wave method or the onion method, where you essentially work in waves or you peel back layers. So you start with the easiest stuff. That's all the stuff that you know that you are going to be just dumping um, or recycling. But the things that you can make quick decisions about, just getting those out. Then you go back through the stuff. Okay, what can I easily let go of? What can I easily donate? And you keep going layer by layer, wave by wave, um, making the harder and harder decisions as you go. But by starting with the easy stuff, it helps you to build up that momentum, build up some motivation, get some confidence in your decision-making abilities, and to start seeing a visible difference very early on in the process. I really hate this part of the process when there's just stuff everywhere. And because this is such a tight space, I, I feel like I can't even move. It's very disheartening, but always at this stage in every decluttering process, I have two thoughts. One is, how did it get this bad? How did I let it get this bad? And two, I will never let it get this bad again. <sighs> yeah, I don't, it will never get this bad again. If you are struggling while you're doing a decluttering job or if you're really dreading a decluttering job, I would always say to start with the bigger 
bulkier items because once you get rid of those you're going to see a much bigger visible difference that is going to give you the motivation to keep going when you get to the smaller stuff then as you can see here i'm going through bags of things get comfortable so i sat on the floor probably not the most comfortable but it was better than just bending over stuff so try and get yourself as comfortable as possible it's going to make the process easier and then i would say for what is left try to create loose categories what that will help with is you will be able to see what you have maybe too much of it will also help you to see areas where you maybe do not have enough of something and you need to go buy something new or replenish something but it also just makes it easier then when it comes time to putting things back because you want to be storing like with like that will make it easier for you to find things so by loosely categorizing them now you will be able to put them all back in one go okay it's been half an hour i did not expect it to take this long just to do the mudroom section and i'm honestly still not entirely finished i still have some stuff to go through but let me show you the progress that i have made thus far i would say it's probably apart from actually like putting the stuff back just going through it i'm probably 90 95 percent of the way there so i just hung some bags up here basically just to get them up and off the floor so i could move a little bit here then is um hats and uh, helmets i think i'm going to be getting rid of this stuff but i've just set it aside here for now um hats gloves scarves helmets more of that sort of stuff here on the floor this is all my stuff these are scout helmets and then this is sam's stuff so i want to ask him before i dump all of that <laughs> he's not going to let me get rid of all of that um i'm not sure if these boots still fit scout or not but i'll try try them on her when she gets home random stuff light bulbs and like insect repellent uh not really sure what i'm going to do with that yet school papers and pictures and stuff that i'm getting rid of i am not really sentimental at all when it comes to uh, pictures and things um so i was able to be pretty ruthless there this is a box of stuff that scout has already decided that she wants to donate um so that's nice that's already done for me <laughs> Um, swim stuff which will probably stay here somewhere maybe in the coat closet these and this are probably bags that I'm well I want to donate um, but I do know the scout likes some of these so I want to check with her first um, these two bags this gray one and this orange one that's just trash that stuff that is going out of here gone <laughs> um, some of it is Stuff that belongs to scout as well but it's like tiny things that i'm not even going to run past her i'm just going to get rid of them pine cones like bits of things like just no no <laughs> um all this stuff out here then is stuff that i am keeping but just needs to go somewhere else so like halloween stuff some of her artwork that i am keeping um dress up stuff that's a shopping bag that will go in here into the coat closet and then these are all the coats jackets haven't gone through those yet so that's a pile that's waiting for me and then just the cleaning stuff that I'm hoping to put into the closet as well so before I go any further I want to get rid of all the rubbish and the recycling now basically just to clear a space for myself so that I can continue working Ugh, I forgot it's bin day the bins are outside I'm not gonna bother going all the way outside with the stuff so I'm just gonna leave it in the garage and bring it out later but top tip for you if you are decluttering stuff that you think is going to cause problems um in your family not that i think any of this stuff will cause problems but i just know that if scout comes home and sees a big bag of trash she's going to want to go through it <laughs> so put that stuff in the outside bins just get them out of your house <laughs> out of sight as quickly as possible and you know not just for your family's sake but for your own as well if you're like me you declutter things if you leave them around for too long chances are you're going to go back to them and start like picking through the bags and boxes again just to see and just to make sure so no just get the stuff out um but yeah i have cleared a space for myself now at least a little bit of a walkway there's some stuff that i'm not going to put away just yet because i want to empty out the coat closet now and i know a lot of this stuff will actually go into the closet out of sight <laughs> so and um, there's no point putting all this stuff back just yet i'm gonna do the coat closet i really don't want to <laughs> so i feel like i've already had enough with this mudroom 
but yeah I'm gonna do the coat closet not sure how much I can show you because it's a really tight space um, but I'll do my best and then hopefully a lot of this stuff the stuff that is staying can go in there and like out of my sight 100% regretting this already haven't even started into it <gasps> <sighs> This area had become such a dumping ground for stuff, so I'm going to really need to be vigilant about this in future. But where in your home is the dumping ground, the place where you tend to just drop stuff or store stuff when you're not really sure what else to do with it? Where is that in your home and how do you stay on top of it so that it doesn't get out of hand? I have managed to landlock myself again. I cannot move completely surrounded. I left the coats in here that I know I'm going to be keeping or some of them are Sam's so I'm not going to touch those I'm just going to let him go through those when he gets home from work and I don't know how I'm going to move out of the space now. I just don't know. Puppy's going to be awake any minute, Sam's going to be home from work any minute and I am blocking the garage door. <laughs> um, so I now have to hustle and get rid of all this stuff. It's just... <laughs> Ow! Ow! <laughs> I set all Scout's coats and jackets aside so that she could try them on when she got home from school and sure enough, the majority of them were too small for her so I was able to add them to the donate pile. There is a fun story behind this blanket. When I was traveling home with Scout once, always brought, you know, a change of clothes, wipes, things like that. But as she grew older, kind of didn't seem necessary. And there was one time she just wanted to pack a load of toys in her carry-on. So I decided, you know what, she's old enough now. Um, she doesn't need a change of clothes, we're going to be fine. Of course. <laughs> the one time, it was the first time I never packed a change of clothes for her, she threw up on the plane just destroyed she was destroyed had to strip her off and the lovely airline staff gave me this blanket to wrap around her and she basically had to wear it like a toga it was first of all i hate flying second of all it's an overnight flight to ireland so it's just already i am not with it not a happy camper like out of my mind with stress anxiety fear um lack of sleep all the things and then trying to cart a child around in a blanket while also carrying all the luggage. It was horrendous. It was horrendous. I don't know what to do with this blanket. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe I will keep it in my car, you know, if I ever broke down somewhere or if we went to like a drive-in movie or something and it was just chilly if I ever had to wait somewhere. I'm thinking that's what I'll do with that. But yeah, that's the story behind that. Is it just me or does every home have at least one bag that's full of other bags? Oh, okay, the puppy woke up, my husband came home and I was just flinging stuff everywhere because I needed to let my husband actually get into the house. I had to bring the puppy out then for a walk. And then my baby girl woke up. Are you excited to see me? Are you excited to see me? But now it's time to actually sort through the rest of this stuff. I've gone through most of it and actually start putting it back in, cleaning out the space, wiping things down, sweeping things, maybe a quick mop. Uh, and yeah, just going through everything that is around me. I actually saved myself quite a bit of space here by taking things out of boxes. So consider that if you have bulky boxes or containers, could you take out what's in them and store those either just on their own or in a smaller box or container? That will save you a lot of space. It is two days later and I'm about to show you the big reveal, but the reason it has taken so long, number, I actually finished on the first day, but I waited because I wanted to get some tubs and baskets. If you can hear the dog playing in the background, just ignore that. I wanted to get some like tubs or baskets to really round it out and I saw that Aldi had some coming in so I went there and they didn't have them. I went this morning to see if they got them in but no. So I'm just gonna have to show you. This is not 100% the way I would want it but it is 98% of the way there. Let me show you. First let me remind you of what the coat closet used to look like and here is the finished 
result i'm really happy with this excuse the echo i actually have to stand in the garage to record this so let me take you through it um up here is <laughs> hush <laughs> um up here is scout's little backpack that she brings when we're flying anywhere so i put her little travel pillow in there the one of these is empty the other one has insect repellent in it i will also use it to put like sun creams and stuff when the summer comes through and then this is car washing stuff and an ikea bag and i feel like everybody <laughs> has an ikea bag in their home jackets here then i did whittle them down sam agreed to donate some of his some of my lighter stuff i moved up to my closet because i'm not going to need it right now we're still in the middle of winter hung the umbrellas up here and these are just some of scout's lighter jackets coming down here then cleaning stuff here shopping bags here and then i've left a box here that we can throw donations in so that is what the coat closet is looking like close these over and now the mudroom this is it isn't it looking so much better i'm really happy for the cubbies this, i wanted the white tubs for the cubbies um but you know it doesn't look terrible so up here we've got sam's hats and gloves my hats and gloves coming down here we've got scouts hats and gloves and then helmets and like knee pads and all sorts of like safety gear and stuff um some backpacks here these are the two that she uses most often so i've just left them down here because she can't quite reach the hooks yet so some extra ones here she did agree to donate some so i've separated out those and then her warmer coats that she wears throughout the winter. So she's currently outside playing. So she's wearing the one that would go here. And then we're just going to ignore all this stuff here that has to either go somewhere else in the house or has to be donated. But do you find that the jobs that you think are going to take the quickest actually take the longest? And the jobs that you're putting off because you think they're going to take hours and hours are the ones that move quicker than you anticipated. I thought this would take me about an hour, but it actually took several. But I'm really happy with the result. It has been bugging me for so long. But then also, do you find that sometimes the cleanup afterwards takes as long, sometimes even longer than the actual decluttering a job i don't know why that is anyway if you like decluttering videos if you like declutter with me videos i have lots of others on my channel so stay tuned for the end screen you will have your pick but yeah really happy with how this turned out thank you so much for watching i'm just gonna sit here and stare at my mudroom for a while <laughs> Slon. So